the fourth episode of Cat Knits. This is a monthly podcast where I talk about what I've been knitting in the last month, what's happening that I'm aware of in the knitting community, and anything that I'm excited about that's yarn or knitting related. So this month, it's November, and we're currently at our parents, at my husband's parents' cabin, uh, just north of Vancouver. We, I'm currently looking out on the ocean, and it's pouring rain, so you might hear the little drops on the ceiling. If we're lucky, we might hear the fire come through, but it's keeping me nice and toasty as the temperature has really dropped. And with daylight savings, it, it definitely, it feels like winter now. I'm very excited because this is actually my first episode where I'm wearing my own uh, hand-knit garment. So this is the second sweater I've ever finished. Uh, unfortunately, it was just Halloween and I dyed my hair green, so I look like the Joker right now, so you can't really get the full picture of what this looks like. But uh, as you can see, I'll do a little demo so you can see there is still that lip in the front that I've been talking about that I've been concerned about. But overall, I think it fits really well. There's a little bit in the, the back as well, but the sleeves I think look fantastic. You'll see I do still have to block it and then weave in all the ends, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's almost a finished garment. I'm really happy with the amount of positive ease uh, that I have in the sweater, and I'm really happy that I did do the, the decreases in the balloon sweater, just for me. The one thing it's a little unfortunate is just, I think I've made it just a bit too short, so I keep pulling it down to kind of, so that's too bad. I'm hoping, that it'll be fine once I block it. If not, then I might consider extending it. But for now, I'm just gonna block it, try to kind of tug it out, tug this out a little bit, tug that out. And uh, it should it should kind of fall into place. It normally does. I find after you block things, really a lot of magic happens. I absolutely love this yarn. I'm definitely gonna use this again. So this was Madeline Tosh, Merino Light and Drops Kid Silk. I didn't realize it, but when you get mohair, it can actually have different things in it. So this one is like a mohair silk blend, I think, considering the name, which I think is what gives it a little bit more shine. So I think I would try a mohair blend that didn't have silk next time. I think silk does add strength to your yarn. I know mohair is definitely a lot tougher. Yeah, I'm actually gonna take this off just because I do feel like the Joker with the green hair. I don't think it quite works. I am going to, I'll probably wear this again once I get my hair done at the end of the month. I went as Billie Eilish for Halloween. I really wanted to go celebrate Halloween last year. I love Halloween, but due to the, the virus, we weren't able to do it. And unfortunately, Billie Eilish completely changed her look uh, in the last year, she went from green and black hair to blonde, but I really wanted to have the green hair, so I just pretended that it would work, uh, which I think it did. It worked well enough. I had a great Halloween. Just kind of fun to forget about everything for a while. So yeah, I was pretty excited. I, the sleeves took no time at all. I actually, for the sleeves, the fun thing was, is I got to use my little uh, mini Chia uh, Chiagu I got this cute little needle set, which is all like their mini needles. So I got to use that. Unfortunately, I just have the small size for sock knitting. So I only got to use it um, when I did the ribbing. As, as you can see, it's like a very small cuff and she mentions that in the pattern. But they're these little tiny mini circular needles so that you can knit, uh, I have them in my socks. So you can knit in the round on small circumference items. So I did that for the neck, I was able to do it in this just because it's a small enough needle that I have it and then I was able to do the cuffs as well. So that was a lot of fun. I absolutely love these needles. I have these ones and then I have like the bigger interchangeable set that I got as a gift and I'm sold. I'm officially a Chiago fan. I just love the fact that I can pack all my needles with me in such a small case and then I can knit anything I want, anytime I want. So. Can't be much better than that. I'll get rid of that. Uh, I guess I can talk about this first. 
since I pulled this out, but this is those birthday socks that I've now mentioned quite a few times. As you can see, oops, I got it like caught a little bit in here. Oh, well. I finished the one and I'm making pretty good progress on the second. I'm hoping to wrap these up soon as I'd like to uh, write up the pattern officially and then put it out for test knitting. These are knit in the Tough Love Sock by Sweet Georgia, which is working out great. And if you saw my last episode, this is my first ever project bag that I won at uh, Knit City Vancouver. So this has got my project in it. It's got the socks. They're by Lone Larch, which is a, I think she's Alberta, uh, but Canadian based. And it's just working out great. I just love how contained it is. And I just don't have to even worry about it. I don't have to worry about my dog getting into it. I can pack it in my suitcase without getting tangled and everything. So that's been a lot of fun. And the other big thing, which you probably can see taking up almost the entire table, is my knit collage kit arrived for the fall knit along. So it actually arrived last Friday, which is about almost four weeks since I ordered it. As a Canadian, I did have to pay additional duties on it, which is uh, something to keep in mind, but I am just so excited, so excited. Uh, the yarn is much softer than I was expecting. So that this is cloud spun, which is wool. And as you can see, I got, this will be the main color of my cardigan. And then I got this white, which is, oopsies, which is uh, one of the contrast colors. And then there's this kind of taupey brown. That's the other one. It's so funny. So I wound up these balls and as you can see, they're just huge. The yarn is bulky, so it just makes for a dramatic, they can't fit in this tiny little bag, which makes sense. But yeah, it's just been so much fun to knit with. It was so much fun to open it up too. I just felt like a little kid on Christmas. So I ended up finishing the swatch over the weekend. This is the first time I purposely was knitting it fairly loose. And this is the first time that I have officially been way too loose of a knitter. I have yet to meet Gage, so I wasn't expecting to meet Gage, but I wasn't expecting to be this far off. I'm actually going to take another stab at it and re-knit it, just because I am, like, I think I, I wanna say, like, I only have, like, two thirds of the amount of stitches I need, which is really far off. I don't wanna be that far off. With this swatch, I actually knit it in the round, which is another first for me. And the idea behind this is that uh, people will knit in a different uh, strength than they will purl in. So what you do is you do your entire stitch only by knitting and then you carry your yarn. So this would almost be like the back of the loop. Like if you're doing it in the rounds, so you carry your yarn across and that way you're only ever knitting. And typically what you might do is you might actually go ahead and like cut down all of these so that you can really lay your swatch flat, but I wouldn't recommend doing this, and Amy talks about this as well. Don't cut it until you're absolutely happy with your swatch because you might wanna rip it out like I'm going to and re-knit it. And it would just be a shame to not be able to reuse the yarn. The fun thing about the sweater is it is steaked and uh, Amy from Knit Collage has designed it so that you can practice steaking on your swatch. So I am, I am gonna do that once I get a swatch I'm happy with. I'm gonna wait until I do the real steak to do the practice steak, just so I can, it's kind of all fresh in my mind about the things that I don't like about it. But yeah, I'm super happy with the colors of the yarn, the feel of the yarn, the way it's knitting up. I think it's just gonna be a fun sweater and it's gonna be like nothing I've ever knit before. We're in week two of the knit along, so I'm a little behind. I've been attending the Zoom calls with the other knitters and Amy and watching the videos and oh my goodness, the amount of work they put into the knit collage is huge. There's, I think I've watched maybe nine or eight videos just for week one for tips on how to kind of get started picking your size, making your swatch. And then they have, I've attended uh, two Zooms so far, but they've had way more than that. One particularly for questions on the sweater that I'm knitting. They also provide, I think you can sign up for half an hour help every week, one-on-one -on -one if you have a question. I'd say if you haven't knit before, 
they really just go over and above and beyond with helping you feel excited and feel ready to knit a sweater. And how fun is the yarn? So overall, great experience so far, would recommend it. And so those are my three main colors for my uh, cardigan. I think it's Mountain, can't remember the name of it, Mountain something uh, cardigan, but I do color work with these three colors with the blue, the main, but then you get the sampler kit where you get to do a little kind of accents. And let me just grab that one that fell over. And you just do like a couple rows of these every once in a while. And one of them is actually fabric, which will be another first for me. So her designs incorporate that. Uh, one of them has daisies put into the yarn. I'm really excited about this one. I also think this color will just really pop. I'm so happy that they just put the colors together for you so I don't have to worry about making the wrong color choice. Color picking is just, oh, so hard. This one, which is, what's this one called? That one is called Daisy Chain. This one is called, I don't think that's the actual, so this is just a sampler. Oh, okay, I think it's called Wildflower Yarn. This is Wildflower Yarn. This one is Castaway Yarn, so it's almost just like a, a rainbow of colors. And this is just another cloud spun, but in like a soft pink, which will also complement the colors very well. And then this last one is called Dreamland Yarn, and it also has little things spun into it. So it has these little blue roses, as well as it looks like, um, like streamers, I would say, like from when I was a kid, and little bits of like bright orange, hot yellow, hot yellow, <laughs> colors woven in as well. She does recommend that you hand wind these skeins just because they do have all these fun little trims in them. So yeah, I'm very excited. The knit along goes until the end of December. I'm a little behind, but I don't think it'll be too hard to catch up just because the yarn is so big. Knitting with those big needles, I would have thought it would be fast, but because the needles are so big, my hands feel awkward in them. So I'm definitely, I'm probably going at the same pace almost. Um, maybe not. I, I'm still, I'm going slower, but because of the bulky yarn, you, you get a lot done and a lot less. So yeah, I hope I can uh, fix my gauge so that I don't have to fight the pattern the whole way, kind of like I did on my balloon sweater. We'll see what happens. I also am going to block the swatch Fully. I'm going to wet block it and then uh, let it dry completely before going forward. One thing that I did uh, see is that Mary Wallen, I think her name is. Oh, I wrote that down. Let me just check what her name is. Yes, Mary Wallen. So she does all fair all knitting. And she has a club that starts, I think it's December 1st or 7th when the sign up is. I found her when I was trying to do an assignment for school and I just fell in love and into the weeds with her designs. They're just super intricate fair aisle knitting with all sorts of interesting pattern construction, like um, almost like you do blocks and then you kind of pick up sides of the blocks. And with her, she does these like knit alongs. So I think they're limited to about 500 people and they're six months and she does videos, uh, same idea kind of as knit collage. And you get access to these exclusive patterns. Again, uh, same idea as knit collage. And these sweaters are just, I think they're, I wanna say they're like fingering weight though, fingering weight, uh, fair isle, like all over color work. So a couple year project. I would really love to do one. I'm thinking about maybe doing one uh, the following year. Right now I do want to just use up the yarn that I have and still I have the Guthrie sweater which is considered a fair isle. I mean it's just uh, two color color work. So 
I'll get a little bit of experience there. But yeah, definitely go check her out if you haven't before. There's one where you knit a queen size blanket. Uh, there's no way I could do that. I mean, I could do it, but it would take, it would be a lifetime. It'd be one of those things where it would take me probably 10 years to complete. So not, yeah, not for me, but these, these jacket sweaters that she creates, those I think I would uh, fall in love with and should do. Speaking of Fair Isle, I actually am at the cabin and I saw my mother-in-law bought these blankets, which these are the Lopi blankets, which is that Icelandic yarn. I was talking about um, that designer, what was her name? Uh, oh gosh, I had it in here. Sorry, it's in my notes. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, Linka Newman. Uh, she does uh, sweaters in this wool and it's this Icelandic wool, so it's more of a rustic wool and it kind of gets that little bit of felting. And I would like to make one of her sweaters for winter eventually, but I thought I'd show you this blanket, which is just, oh my gosh, I think the great thing is just the colors that they choose. That's what I love when you get all your yarn from one person for like a color work, is that they really make sure that all the colors go together. And it's softer than I was expecting. I mean, I know it's rustic and they do say like the more you kind of wash it and wear it, it does tend to really soften up, but yeah, this is just gorgeous. And I actually like the other side. I like the white muted tones. So it's very cozy. It's kind of fun. Another wool brand that makes these blankets. Very warm, cozy blankets. Kind of a fun, fun idea for a, maybe a Christmas gift. If you know someone that likes, likes knitting. Sorry, I got distracted there for a second. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is the Stephen West shawls. I don't know if you've been following that, but all four, all four or five clues have been now released. And the shawl is just, whoa. I definitely think I want to do one of those maybe next year. It has bobbles, it has brioche. It's got all these techniques in it. I think that's what I love most about the shawl is it's just packed with different techniques which I haven't done before. I'm not, I don't wear shawls. I 100% won't wear the shawl unless it's maybe for like a costume or something like that. But I'd love to knit one just to really kind of see how the construction goes. And maybe, maybe I would eventually fall in love with shawls if I did that. But yeah, definitely go check that out. And i makes me want to do one of Stephen West's knit alongs just because they're so much fun and it's kind of cool how you only get a portion of it every week. So it's also, it's a mystery to the long, which I think you can kind of only do with a shawl. I was thinking if you could maybe do that with a sweater somehow. I think you could a bit, like maybe with the way you're doing the color work. Anyways, I was thinking maybe at some point in my future, I'd love to host a mystery knit along. And just since I'm not a huge fan of wearing shawls, maybe I would do a sweater but definitely something to check out if you haven't already and the other thing i wanted to mention is there's this brand called sweet nesting i just saw she did a post on stephen west um knit along but it's this hand dyed yarn she does hand yarn and it's only custom orders and her color choices are just unbelievable she does like a lot of i'd say very she does more fun colors so bright um and you send her what pattern you're hoping to make and then she'll custom dye these sets and she does these magnificent fades that um, I would almost say like maybe are like 15 skeins long. So definitely go check her out, follow her just for a little bit of color fun in your life. But yeah, I think now, you know, we're getting into the month of November and the beginning of December. So I'm starting to think a bit about what I'm gonna knit for Christmas gifts. I didn't do any hand knit items last year. I was hoping to get some socks done this year, but I've only got six weeks, which is not, it's not looking good. I do, last year I made uh, two cosmetics bags. So I think I'm going to do that again this year is make some cosmetic bags for friends. 
I wish I could do some gift knitting, but I think with this knit collage, finishing up the sock, and I think it's just going to be too much. So I hope everyone is doing well, enjoying the fall wherever you are, and hope maybe getting a chance to think about and start that gift knitting for other people. I always love um, when someone gives me something handmade, which is why I've tried to really give away knitting. It is, I, you know, there's two sides to it. I gave away almost everything I knit for the last couple years and now I'm trying to really uh, make some stuff for myself just because it is, it is nice to wear, but I think there's so much joy that you can give someone when you knit them something handmade. So yeah, fun things to think about and I'll see you all in December, which is the last month of 2021. I just, I can't get my head around that. So hope you have a great rest of your day or evening, wherever you are and see you in a month. Thank you.